Hello and welcome to the garden. So this is the third and final instalment of our tour of the undercover growing spaces. This is where all of our most important and most interesting crops are at this time of year. We love all the tomatoes, the chilies and the peppers and yeah, they're not doing too bad. A little bit, little bit unsure how the tomatoes are going to develop. Some of them are immensely vigorous, but it's not clear yet whether that's going to translate into large crops or just lots of green stuff. So that will be interesting to see a little bit later in the year. It may all come good, but they are certainly immensely vigorous. But anyway, let's get on with it. So I'm in one of the main greenhouses here. This is the one with the peaches and my wife's come through and she's bagged up the grapes this year to keep the birds off of them. These are very fine bags. We tried them for the first time last year after birds came in and raided the vines. And it was a bit too late. They'd already taken a lot of the grapes, but these worked so well that we're doing it routinely this year. So she's uh, bagged all of the grapes in, in, in both greenhouses. We'll at least get to eat whatever we do manage to produce. Everything in here seems to be doing okay. The, the, only, the only caveat really is that I'm getting more vegetative growth from the tomatoes than I really expected. All of the varieties I've got in here seem to be true to type. I've got the rogues in the other greenhouse. So I, I don't know what's going on with these. They are immensely vigorous. The stems on them are huge. Let's take a look. Let's just look at the size of this stem. I mean, it's great to see. I, I like to see a nice vigorous plant. I don't want to see a weak, weedy fella. Those in the polytunnel are quite weedy, but I think that's the character of the variety. These are just massive. I mean, look, I've got a side shoot here. I may or may not take that away. These are so vigorous that I might leave a few now near the top. But this side shoot, I mean, you'd be quite happy if that was the main stem of your tomato, I think. But I mean, just look, it's a, I've got chunky digits and it, I mean, it's so much fatter than my thumb. It's ridiculous. Well, these have now gone over six foot in here and you can see this stem, it's split here and into two and normally I take one of those out, whichever one was least well placed, but it's just, there's so much vigor from these rootstocks that I don't think there's any problem leaving, at, certainly at this stage, two stems to carry on. I just have to keep pulling these out from behind the trellising here and I will stop these at some point, but I've got trellising all the way up the slope of the roof so I can let them go for a little while yet. Yeah, I mean, we are still in June after all, but I mean, this is just, this is just flying. So if we take a look at some of the fruit here, I have looked at the truss and all those little flowers, they have set, a couple of them are way ahead, but I mean, it's not big fruit and it's not an impressive truss, not yet. I mean, these fruit will get much bigger, so I suppose in the end that won't be too bad, but I would have thought they'd be much further along by now. You can see I've taken away some of the lower leaves. That's for uh, good airflow as much as anything else. These, these plants have got so big, they really don't need all of those leaves. So I've removed a few. There's some nice fruit starting to appear on some of these, but I think we're a little bit behind where we were last year. And as I said, I think too much energy is going into vegetation here. This one's Pantano. This is a nice tomato, excellent for slicing. And again, I think, I think these have all set, but there's not a huge number of fruit here. It is a fairly large fruit when it's, when it's fully developed. It will be a bit bigger than this, but it's not a huge truss, a lot smaller than last season. I've got some larger fruit in there. I've got one rather ugly misshapen one, but the others are looking very pleasant indeed. 
you can see the pepper plants in here. They're all being trained in the same way, just up those two strings. And I've started to use the strings because they are carrying some quite heavy fruit now. These are all bull's horn types. I think in this greenhouse, I've got yellow ones and red in the other. Might be the other way around. I will find out when they start to ripen. You can see they've set a good amount of fruit already and these are a reasonable size. Some of them are very nice indeed. And yeah, they're all being fairly productive. Now, they may not set a huge amount now. Uh, they might do. I mean, they are, they are still setting fruit, but at some point they will take a bit of a back seat and wait until some of these others are harvested. I mean, the large fruited sorts, they, they do tend to set a limited amount of fruit and, and uh, it, the more you pick, the more you get. The problem with these is I don't really like them when they're green. The large fruited sorts, the bull's horns and the, the bell peppers, I much prefer them when they are ripe. So I don't know what's gonna happen with these now. I, I think I tend to get six or seven fruit, then they will, they will abort quite a few of the flowers. And then later in the year, as I start to pull a few that have, that have ripened, I will get like a second flush of them. But anyway, they are being pretty productive this year. They're quite healthy. I've got a little bit more of the aphid. There's an enormous amount of aphid here this year. Um, maybe the, certainly one of the worst years for it and possibly the worst year we've ever had here with, with aphid. I don't normally get much trouble on the peppers, but you can see there they are. There's some young fellas and I need to come through here with the soapy water. Outdoors at least, We've got a ton of ladybirds dealing with them, but under cover, we don't, we don't tend to get so much help. So I'm gonna to have to come through and give these a little bit of, either I can jet these off with the hose or then give them a squirt of soft soap. It's very mild, I'm not gonna cause any harm. If I do happen to see any ladybird larvae or, or ladybirds themselves, then I will not be spraying anything. They will very quickly deal with it. You can see here the pruning of it. I've just got this one stem coming up and every time it splits, I take off one half. So I have to come through from time to time and remove the excess. Um, I tend to pick the most vigorous or best placed. It's split there again. So actually that one at the back I often take them as they're, as they're coming out to that help separate these stems, but that one at the back is much more vigorous. So I'll pinch this one out at the front. Every time it splits, you get the chance for a fruit here and away it will go. And you can see it's, it's actually divided in there already. Um, I will take that, that one out when it's uh, a little bit bigger, easier to get to. But I think by pruning them this way, I mean, you get nicer plants, the fruit's more spaced out, they're not so crowded, you've got better airflow. And I'm not limiting the number of fruit I get, I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. And um, simply because th these plants, there's a limit to how much fruit they can set, like, it, like any plant, just like an apple tree. There, there's a limit to how much fruit it can properly bring to maturity. And if you allow it to set too much, you get small, nasty fruit, and that's not what we want. We want good-sized, delicious fruit from these. At the end here, I've got the lemongrass, and that's just a fun little crop. It's, it's not really a serious crop, though I would be delighted to get something usable at the end. They seem to be growing quite happily in here. I do have some in pots outdoors. They're also doing okay, but, but they're doing really well in here whether I get some nice, chunky, usable stems later in the year, I don't know yet, but now they're not in the way, so it's a fun thing to have a go at. I did a video about pruning apricot fans not that long ago, and, and in that video I shortened 
say this stem, I cut it back to here and look at all that regrowth. Huge amount of regrowth and I'm going to have to come in here and tie in, prune, select some branches from this lot and remove the excess. And it's just a massive amount of healthy young growth here and yeah, I'm going to have to come back and have a, a second pruning session here. Um, I'm certainly going to be able to develop this fan a lot more, fill in a lot more of the space here this season than I had expected because this regrowth has been so vigorous. I've got, what have I got there? Probably, I've got nearly a metre of regrowth from when I last pruned it. So that is pretty good. A treat on the way. Now this peach is probably just about ripe. See, there's a nice flush to it. You never get too red, this variety. This is early rivers, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that probably later today. So I'm in the other greenhouse now, and it's a similar sort of arrangement in here, but whereas that one's got peaches, this one has figs, and yeah, I've got the tomatoes and the, the peppers again in the main bed, and the figs in the border. Everything again looks nice and healthy, pretty vigorous in here. I've got some dodgy tomato varieties here that, and yeah, again, I'm, I'm not that impressed with the productivity of the tomato so far. It may be that when we get to the other end of the season, I will look back and, and be absolutely delighted with the crop I get. I'm, I'm not sure yet, but I do have the feeling that the balance between vegetation and fruit is not right and it's very different from last year. Last year the grafted plants, they, they put so much energy into the trusses. The trusses had many more fruit than I was expecting. The fruit themselves were really large. I mean, some of the fruits were enormous. Uh, over a kilo, the largest specimens, and yeah, they, they were superb enormous weight of fruit. I mean, we turned about 150 kilos of tomatoes into tomato sauce. I'd be very grateful if a few of these started to ripen pretty soon because I think we've only got five pots of tomato sauce left. So we've had a year round supply from last year. So we were really delighted with the productivity last year. Uh, we're a little bit nervous about it this season and they definitely seem to be a little bit behind. Well, our first ripe fruit here is going to come from the sun gold, but that is a very, very miserable truss for any sun gold, I mean, let alone a grafted plant. That, that's just, that is just rubbish. We've got a better truss a bit higher up, but of course that's going to wait a while before, before we get those fruit. So I don't know, this, this one, is very often one of the one of the first to ripen here and usually before the certainly before the large fruited sorts but usually also before any of our other plum tomatoes so or, or smaller cherries so yeah I'm, I'm sure it will give us our first ripe fruit this year again and it'll do okay because it, it always does but I'm not really seeing the the benefit of the grafting with this not in terms of the fruit but again, look at that stem. It is absolutely enormous. So vigorous. I, I don't know what's going on with them, really. Too much veg, not enough fruit. My Belmonte tomatoes this year, well, these are pretty miserable. I mean, this, I don't know. That, that is definitely not the same strain I, I grew last year. I meant to save seed from them last year, and... I must confess, I totally forgot about it until it was too late and I didn't get any of my own seed, so I had to buy fresh and I got them from a different supplier. The one I bought from last year could no longer ship to the UK thanks to Brexit, so that was very disappointing. I appear to have a different strain. Now I know there are actually two tomatoes from that region that go by the name Belmonte. Um, I appear to have the other one so I'm not expecting the same size fruit maybe it'll be 
even tastier. That was one of my favourites last year, but it's a pity I don't have that same fruit. I don't know what size to expect from these. Hopefully a lot bigger than that. I don't know what this is. It isn't what it is supposed to be. This is one of my rogue varieties. It looks like a plum type of some sort. And actually quite a few of those plum types are bush tomatoes. So I'm not at all surprised that it, it's not a cordon, but I don't know what it is. I've just got piles of rogue seed this year. So I, I'm not that happy with that. Um, but anyway, I've got fruit on here. So that's the main thing. You can see these plants are a lot shorter and yeah, that, I've, I've started to leave the side shoots. I'm not pinching them out anymore. I will do if they get really crowded, but um, if it is a bush type, as I believe it to be, then pinching out those side shoots is really going to limit the crop. So I've, I've kind of stopped doing that when it gets, when it, when the airflow gets poor and, and it's just too crowded. I will remove some leaves and then, then start pinching out any more of the side shoots. But I mean, it's doing OK and they have set plenty of fruit. And that's the main thing. Whether it's any good or not, who knows? It's certainly not the variety I ordered. I have absolutely no clue what this big fella at the end is. Again, it's, it's probably six and a half feet tall already. Um, this is one tomato here. It's split early on and it was so vigorous and outstripping its neighbors that I decided to allow two stems to grow up especially as its neighbor is a bush type and it's not going to get that tall. Oh, you can see just from the foliage that this is not the same variety it's supposed to be. Now there's always a possibility that I did something silly with the labels but I don't think this is any of the varieties I, I've actually picked. So no clue what this is. It is producing plenty of fruit, so we'll find out later whether it's any good. But again, a rogue seed. Yeah, I mean, this, this doesn't look like anything I'm trying to grow. I don't know what it is. It's certainly not the variety I ordered, but that's a nice looking truss on the way there. I think these other Flowers have probably set. Yes, they have. So, yeah, I mean, by the time it's finished, I dare say we'll have some nice tomatoes. Just not the ones I expected. At the back here, I've got two cucumber plants. Now, I was thinking I would allow more than one main stem to come up here, but in the end, I decided to pinch them out to just, just keep that one stem. These are immensely productive. Now, I don't normally grow hybrids, um, but this is a hybrid. I think this one is Carmen, and I, I, don't, I don't find hybrids nearly as interesting as growing the old varieties that I really like. But that said, these are wonderful plants. I really can't fault them. They are vigorous, immensely productive, healthy plants. I mean, there's... So far, I, I just can't fault them. I haven't tried the fruit yet, but there are at least three that are ready, maybe four. So they will be eaten within the next day or two. And there are so many coming. I, I will be inundated with cucumbers. It won't be too long before they reach the top of the greenhouse. And then I will start to tie them in along the length and they can track all the length of the greenhouse if they want. I don't know how far they'll get. They normally get several meters along the roof, but there's gonna be so much fruit on these. Oh, that is just a wonderful fruit. It is rock hard, it is lovely. If the flavor is there, then I, I really can't fault this variety. It is, it is super. It might not give me quite the same pleasure as growing, say, the old Telegraph or one of the older greenhouse cucumbers, but nonetheless, th this is a super plant. I'm very impressed with it. There's another one. Oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a really good for a, for a classic sort of old-fashioned glasshouse house cucumber. 
it's great. I mean, these are large fruit, and I know, I know there are quite a few gardeners that grow some of the smaller fruited sorts, and and that's quite understandable because, um, you know, you can't always deal with large fruits like this. Maybe not quite so convenient in the kitchen, but we like them, so um, they do suit us. And there are so many of them. I'm really not going to be short of cucumber. So the usual thing with these, you, the, the main stem comes up and then you get the leaf. And in the leaf axle you get very often one fruit, sometimes you'll get more than one will appear. And then you also get the side shoot and, and it's the side shoot that I want to remove. And I will do that all the way up. Because this is a hybrid I don't have to do anything with the flowers. With the old fashioned glasshouse cucumbers I have to go through and pinch out all the male flowers, not the females, but the male flowers have to go to prevent them from getting pollinated because then you get bitter fruit. But it's funny that only applies to the old glasshouse cucumbers. They don't want to be pollinated. The ridge types, you don't want to take off the male flowers from those. They need to be pollinated. But yeah, it is nice to be a little bit lazy this year and not have to pinch out all of those flowers. And so far, I am very happy with the cucumbers. Well, the peppers are very similar to those next door. I don't, maybe they're not quite as tall as they were last year, but I do expect them to put on quite a bit more height before the season is done. They've set quite a lot of fruit and the fruit is of a pretty good size for this time of year, I think. Well, that's a lovely pepper there on the way. And there's a little cluster with four more and they will put on more fruit later on. That's another great looking fruit. This one's a little bit malformed, it's not a problem, but this is a bull's horn pepper. When this fruit came out, and a couple of them have gone like this, the first fruit looked remarkably like a bell pepper. So I was really worried that I had rogue seed with these as well, but actually, that's not a bell pepper, it's just a, a weird shaped bull's horn type. You can see from this fruit here that we've got the, the proper pointy pepper shape on the way. So that's just an aberration. Those are a more classic shape and yeah, I've got four nice fruits on this plant already. I don't know if this one is set, let's have a little look. Yep, yeah, there's another fruit on the way and more up here. They're growing quite happily. Again, I'm, I'm pruning them to just two branches. I need to come through here and do some pruning because these, this branch here is bigger than it should be. Let me just break that off. It's a little bit big to pinch off, but there we go. And I'll do the same here as well. I'll keep that branch, get rid of that one. So just like in the smaller greenhouse here, I don't routinely apply liquid feed. Different scenario, the plants in the greenhouse, okay, they're in pots, so in theory they, they might benefit from a bit of liquid feed later in the year, but they are smaller fruited sorts, they're not nearly so greedy. I mean, a chili plant actually isn't a very greedy plant. It's surprising how little they can manage on. And I know that very well because I've got a chili in our kitchen, which has been growing for at least six years, I think now, um, possibly a little longer. And it was a gift from, from a visitor and we thought we'd try and keep it going for as long as we can. Well, it's a good six years old now and it fruits happily more or less year round. It's in need of a pruning right now. Um, yeah, I, it will flower and fruit all through the winter, actually. Um, the light level's a bit poor, but it doesn't seem to mind too much. It has had hardly any feed in its entire life. It, it's never been repotted. I think once, it may be twice, but I think it's only once have I spread like an inch or so of fresh compost on the top of the pot and I suppose I've given it uh, a pretty mild organic seaweed based feed no more than a handful of times and it's a prolific little fella. The fruits are only only small, they're very hot. 
don't need many of them, but it, it produces more than we can eat, actually, just that one plant. So I've, I've very rarely fed it, and it doesn't care. It does need to be put, put in some fresh soil now because you know after six years or so, there's very little goodness in whatever it's in, and it'll probably be quite happy to be moved on. But that just gives you an idea of how little they can get by with. I think it's probably a very different thing with these larger fruited sorts. I think they're a lot more greedy, but I've got those in the beds here and, and the beds have been prepared with a hefty layer of horse compost. And you know, every every gardener is different. You grow you grow in the style that, that you're comfortable with. And for me, if at all possible, I much prefer to feed the soil rather than the plants. I dare say in here, I occasionally put a sprinkling of fish blood and bone, but mostly I rely on organic matter. Compost or horse compost is, is, is what I largely favor. We can have homemade compost or, or bagged other compost, but the horse compost I use quite a lot of. And that's basically what feeds my plants. I haven't fed the tomatoes or the peppers yet. And unless I see signs of a deficiency, I may well give them no feed this season at all. And that way I'm happiest. You've got to be careful if you're using liquid feed because you can overdo it. Um, I would certainly say that little and often is, is better than great big heavy doses of the stuff. And I mean, the thing is, the nutrients in the liquid feed, they tend to be, uh, especially the synthetic ones, they are readily available to the plant, but there can be just too much of it. And too much of certain nutrients can be actually detrimental to the plant. And actually, it can be quite detrimental to the soil life. And if you're growing, following a sort of organic philosophy, the main thing really is the soil life. It's that, it's that network of organisms and especially sort of the fungi and, and, and other life in the soil that is giving you true fertility. And the last thing I want to do is upset any of that. So if they do get a feed here, it will only be a pretty mild seaweed based feed. It doesn't have the sort of NPK levels of, of a lot of the feeds that are out there, but that, that's my personal preference. So, so that's how I treat them in here. Usually, as I say, there's, there's, enough, there's enough fertility in this soil now after years of applying the, the horse compost that they don't seem to need much else. At the end here, I've got my ginger plants. Now I've grown ginger quite a few times before and I do like it. It makes a very nice house plant, actually. I've never tried it in one of the greenhouses here. I've always done it in pots indoors. I'm hoping to see some flowers later in the year because they do have very pretty flowers. I don't know how this is going to do here. Uh, it's only really just getting going. I would like to see some more shoots come up. I've got, what have I got here? I've got five. Oh no, I've got, I've got six. There's one small one that I put in recently. So I've got six little ginger plants. I would be very happy if it started to spread out, but so far it hasn't bothered. Maybe once these are more fully established, I'll get some more shoots. The fig trees are going completely crazy here. Um, I need to get in here and tie in and prune these out a little bit. I've got some figs coming. This is a nice green fig. It will produce very large figs. There was no braver crop this year, probably because I, I pruned it pretty hard last season. Um, this is Brogiotto Bianco. Uh, very pleasant fig, this one. And this, this is one of the main crop figs, so that will come a lot later. On the plant next door, this is Rouge de Bordeaux. It's a beautiful, deep purple fig. It, it's absolutely lovely. Sweet, honeyed flavor. Completely different characteristics from the, from the uh, Brogiotto Bianco. Um, 
totally different flavor profile, very different shape fig. This one's a lot smaller and they've got a long way to go yet. And again, I think I lost the Braber crop. I don't know if we had, we may have had a frost in the greenhouse. We, we don't get many, but I, something happened and, and we lost the Braber crop. So again, these are main crop figs that will come a bit later in the year. They've got a lot of work to do. But you can see there are plenty of them coming and I really look forward to those. The muscat grapes are looking pretty good here. The start of the year was a bit too cold, so these have a lot of work to do if I'm going to get perfectly ripe fruit. This is muscat of Alexandria. It doesn't really want to ripen very well. I need a, a warm start to the year and, and a warm finish. Well, we didn't get the warm start, so we need a pretty good autumn to get perfectly ripe fruit from these. But when they are ripe, uh, the flavor is astonishing. Well, that's it for the greenhouses and the polytunnel. There's just one undercover space left to look at, and that's the melons in the cold frames. Well, I just opened the one frame today. I think pretty much all the melons are doing equally well. They look quite healthy. So I've got here an Italian variety. We've never grown it before. This is Zatta. I understand the Italians describe it as brutto ma buono, ugly but good. And it's one of those with a little bit like a, a pumpkin shape to it, knobbly, pretty ugly sort of fruit. But we'll find out later in the year whether it is good. And you might be able to see here, I've got multiple stems. These are side shoots. And that's because I pinched out the main stem. I'm not sure how many leaves or nodes I had there, four or five, something like that. And then I pinched out the main stem and that's encouraged these secondaries to grow. And it's from those that I'm getting the flowers. That's probably a male flower, but the flowers are just starting. So it won't be too long now before I expect to see some female flowers and hopefully some young fruitlets. The bumblebees are really effective at pollinating these and we've got a really healthy population of bumblebees. The plants themselves, they're looking quite happy. We've got horse compost and a sprinkling of fish blood and bone here and they seem to be enjoying that. Obviously we've got to keep these watered but it's, it's interesting, these frames don't seem to lose quite as much moisture as you might think. And, and actually, we don't need to water these melons quite as much as we have to water the outdoor winter squash. So anyway, they, they look to be doing pretty good. It's going to be a long time before we get any sense of how well they're going to produce this year. But there's a lot of growth on the plants. There's also a bit of weed growth. I need to get in here and pull that out. So that is it for our tour of the undercover growing spaces. And this year, that is where the most interesting things are happening here. Um, as I mentioned in a couple of videos, we are cutting back a little bit on what we're doing. And we do still have crops outdoors. We've recently harvested our shallots and we've still got onions, of course, and we've got peas and, and beans and, and so on. So. Our sweet corn is doing okay. That was looking a little bit dodgy when it went in, but it's all those stems have fattened up, it's greened up and it is away now. So we do have other stuff on the go, but, but our most important and for me, most interesting crops are always those we're growing undercover. So I hope you've enjoyed that little tour of our undercover spaces. I think it's a little bit mixed. I'm not so happy with the tomatoes this year, but the peppers and chilies are doing incredibly well so yeah overall i'm quite happy anyway thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now